Citizens of that town, by mayoral decree, the following episode may cover topics the likes of which may trigger your timbers. Consider yourselves duly notified. So, yeah, that was an hour-long block of music. I let the computer pick at random because I was putting out a cold fire. Will I elaborate on what a cold fire is? Not now. But since it's the top of the hour, I'll play this syndicated program. It's called A Night, A Ghost, and A Forest. Sure, why not? There once was a cottage on the edge of a deep forest. In the cottage lived a mother, a father, two children, and the steadfast family mutt. The father was a guard of some sort, and the family was well taken care of by the local royalty. There were things in that deep forest, things that should never leave there. During the day, the father would patrol, carving trees, burning sage, and dropping silver nuggets at the forest's edge. The rest of the family would prepare meals, tend to the needs of the house, and receive packages from the royal court. At night, the doors and windows would be bolted tight. If one was very lost and happened upon the cottage, they would be right to assume that the building was unoccupied. One night, someone did happen upon the cottage. They did assume it to be abandoned. They attempted to open the bolted door. But one of the things that was supposed to be in the deep forest was, in fact, on the cottage's roof. The thing made the person that was being so loud very quiet. The thing from the deep forest didn't hate noise, but it was busy. It needed silence. It needed to find the thing from the open field that kept encroaching. The gangly thing that walked on two twig-leg appendages. The loathsome creature that burned foul weeds, cast graven symbols on the trees, and laid poisonous rocks in the forest. The family inside the cottage held each other close. They had heard the commotion. The father, as quiet as fallen snow, reached for his gun. A clumsy machine of fire and metal, but he knew its tricks. He readied the gun. He let out a slow, long breath to get the fear and stress out of himself. Then slowly, firmly, he squeezed the trigger. The silence and darkness that had resumed after the thing from the deep forest had killed the vagabond broke. A great geyser of burning black powder and lead pellets as numerous as the night sky they flew toward ripped through the silence and the cottage's roof. The thing from the deep forest never had a chance. The pellets found their mark dozens of times over. It tumbled down the roof and landed with a sick, wet, and discouraging sound on top of its earlier victim. The father, the mother, the children, and even the mutt creeped out to see the carnage. But there was no carnage, no blood, no bodies, no trails to follow. All that was left was the ghost of the man that was slaughtered by the thing from the deep forest. The father burned sage, but the ghost stayed. The father carved symbols on the doorframe to the cottage. The ghost stayed. The mother placed a silver nugget at the ghost's feet ghost didn't even acknowledge what she had done. Seeing that the ghost did nothing but stand and stare blankly, the family re-secured their cottage and went to bed. Time passed, and the package from the royal court came via the usual courier. But when the courier arrived, there was no house. Only ruins, infested by things from the deep forest, and the glowing silhouettes of several humans and a dog. The ghosts paid the courier no mind. The thing from the deep forest, however, did. They paid a lot of mind to any human that came near their deep forest. The humans and the things have an understanding now. Humans stay away from the deep forest. The things stay in the forest. Their ghost victims, they stay where they are. Motionless. Staring at nothing. At night, they glow pale blue like some deep sea creature's lore. Stay away from the deep forest.
Well, that was depressing. I'm going to hit the random button and go hug my dog. I'll be back in an hour. Nah, two. I'll be back in two hours. Maybe. Ah, yes, there we go. Tales of That Town is a production of That Town Entertainment. This week's episode was written and directed by Jesse Hall. It featured the vocal talents of Michael Murphy as Michael and Ashley Jones as the narrator. Our original music was made by Zach Fragoso, who is real and not, as we thought, a dream construct. Goes to show. On social media, we're That Town Entertainment on YouTube, Tumblr, and Facebook. On Twitter, we're at Tales of That Town and at This Is That Town. And we actually have outtakes, so uh, check them out. And then the narration, you know. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. I can do different voices. But I assume you've already got somebody picked out for this role. Stay away from the deep forest. Stay away. Was it depressing? Hey, let me read through that. Jesse, I'm going to waste more of your time. Hmm. Yeah, that is kind of depressing. But he knew its tricks. He readied the gun. He let out a long... (laughs) 